Good day, everyone. I'd like to take a couple minutes and talk about the Solid Edge user interface. It uh, it adopts the Microsoft Fluent UI kind of what you see in your, a lot of your office applications. You see ribbon tabs up here. Of course, you can just simply click on these tabs. If you have your mouse somewhere over this top area uh, and you just roll your wheel, it will cycle through the tabs. Uh, if you double click a tab, it will minimize. Uh, and then you'll have to click one to expose it. But you can just double click it again to give yourself maximum uh, working area. Um, we have a quick access toolbar up here. Any command can be right clicked and you can add to the quick access toolbar. Now when you first start to make modifications, you'll get asked to name a theme. So this is going to be a named configuration for your, your interface. You can make as many as you like, and they should store all your arrangements uh, of the software. So we see now I have a, a little button up here. Uh, so if you essentially if you right click, uh, you'll see that there are some other things you can do. Customize the quick access toolbar. Uh, you can move that bar down below, and you can choose your theme. So the default is this balanced uh, default. And if you choose that, if things get really out of out of whack, you maybe just choose that default and start again. Notice notice that some of these buttons look a little funny. When I uh, scrunch up my application a little bit, these start to collapse the groups. So I kind of just wanted to show that a little bit as well. You probably won't see this if you have your application maximized and you have a good size monitor. If you have a really tiny, crappy monitor, you'll see these collapsed groups. So that's all that's going on there. Um, over on the left, we have tabs. So each one of these, if I click on one, they have kind of a springy uh, motion to them. And that's because the, the auto hide pin is laying down on the side as if it was laying on the table, not stuck into anything. So if you click it, the pin is now stuck down and these all become tabs across the top, like so. Now this other little button, gives you visibility control or it turns off or on other tabs. So let's say I don't want Facebook. Um, you could you could close it. It's probably the inverse of that. If I if I have closed a tab, you can see I can turn Facebook back on. Uh, that's probably a better way to look at it. Maybe I don't use simulation, so I hit the X on that. I don't use this, I hit the X on that. Uh, I don't use generative. I'll turn that off. Nastran log. So you see what's going on. It's removing tabs here. And if you ever wanted to turn any of them back on, you could just grab this little arrow button and uh, turn them back on. And that should all be stored in the theme uh, when you when you re you know when you restart the program. It should actually um, now I'm not sure if they're stored in the theme. Let's go ahead and close this file. Uh, and reopen it. Let's test that. So we see we, we it's it's maintained our pinned uh, layout for our tabs, and that's good. So now let's switch to a different theme. We'll go to the JSON theme. So yeah, it does actually change it. I guess it's odd though that as I change that arrangement, it didn't ask me to save the theme. So that's a little funky. I'm not quite sure why that is. So I'm going to switch back to balance default. And it certainly does remember um, what I've done per theme. Now, these tabs can be pulled out. If I click and hold and drag, this will pull out. And if I drop it just in space, it will become a floating window. If I double click it, it will go back to its original position. And if I double click the tab again, it will go back to its docked or floating position. And if I grab it by the title bar and begin to drag, you can redock it to different places by using these stickers. And hopefully the little preview it gives you is enough so that you can see what you're going to get. Now, watch this. If I come over here to the left, I can insert, if I drop onto this middle button, it will insert it back in as a tab. So you can rebuild these tab sets here that are kind of all together like so. So you can completely 
define the arrangement that you want. Now the um, the pathfinder here has this little bar at the top and normally I like to have it so when I start a command the um, the command bar usually would occupy a little space at the top of the window and this because I cropped my solid edge it didn't really work that way now this thing should kind of move out of the way to make room for your command bar so somewhere there is actually pretty good for me um, if you simply double click this little gripper it will jump to alternate positions to kind of get out of your way so if you're working away and You've, you're into this area in the design, you kind of want that thing over on the right or the other side. Um, so basically there appears to be like three positions here for this. You just double click it and it will jump to those positions. Now if you hold the control key down and double click it, it will turn it into uh, an opaque pane, kind of the same kind of pane that we were looking at a moment ago. So this this might behave a little bit better for you. Uh, it might float a little better. It might maintain its position a little better. Um, you can take it outside of the application, of course. Um, you might, you know, have it docked a certain way. Um, so that's an option as well. And again, if you do Control Double Click, um, uh, it'll toggle it back to that that transparent gripper style as well. Uh, so that's just a little uh, quick start on the Solid Edge user interface. Hopefully that is enough to maybe get you started. And this is Jason signing off.